Now let's take a look at the day's running stories. We want to begin from the oil and gas sector. Indigenous oil firm Springfield has begun a series of activities that could lead to commercial oil production from next year. The company has initiated an agreement with drilling contractor Stena Unicorn to start drilling wells next month. Chief Executive of Springfield, Kevin Autry, has been speaking to Joy Business about the impact of this move on the entire oil and gas industry. Springfield have signed uh, an agreement with uh, a drilling company called Stena for a rig called the Stena Fort um, uh, to drill uh, two wells and potentially additional wells um, later on uh, in a water depth of 1,700 meters, 1,700 meters water depth for one of the fields and another uh, field which is uh, 1,100 meters water depth. Mm -hmm. It definitely goes deeper. It goes mm. about 3,000 meters deeper after that. Mm. So we, we've actually signed um, with, um, with, with the rig company as the first ever African company to own and operate in deep offshore and to sign a contract mm. for a rig to drill in deep offshore. Um, so we have to, after this drilling campaign, is when we will be able to tell you that from this asset, we are going to produce this number of barrels a day and it's going to take us this amount of time mm -hmm. to be in production. So we need this information. I don't know if you remember, but a few years ago, two years ago, we brought the biggest seismic vessel in the world mm -hmm. called the Ramford Titan, um, which is owned by PGS, to shoot 3D broadband seismic. So what that did is it gave us you know, a clear picture of where we think the natural resources are, mm -hmm. which is what has helped us to target where we are going to drill. So we need this drilling campaign to be able to be well informed of exactly our production profiles. Mm. So we hope that you know it's going to be we're going to get commercial quantities mm. in the in the very next few few months. Mm. We are basically, I mean, this phase I would say is one step away mm. from you know um, being in production. So we are just one step away. We just drill this. We will ascertain um, you know how things would you know how how the resource will come out. Um, first of all, we have to find, make sure that there's commercial quantities and how it will come out, how it will flow um, um, uh, to, to, the sea, um, to the sea level and, you know, to be processed and beyond. So, yeah, we're just yeah, one step away from, um, from, you know, commercial production. For Springfield and for you, Mr. Kevin Ochi, what does this development, how do you take this development? Well, I, I mean, I must honestly say that, you know, I'm, I feel like we are blessed um, to be in this opportunity. Um, you need to think about it, you know, on the entire African continent. Now, now there are some amazing companies, African companies doing, you know, very, very well, but they are all either onshore or shallow water. The deep water area has been primarily left for, you know, Western and, and other international um, uh, non-African companies. So to think of it as Springfield is the first African company, it is our first asset. It is our first, you know, oil block that we are working on, and uh, you know, for, easy to, for us to think that we are the first company in the whole world, I mean, just an African company, to actually own and operate and to drill in deep water, I think it's something that has to be celebrated by all Ghanaians. President Okufuado has nominated Edwin Provencal as the new chief executive officer of the Bulk Oil uh, Storage and Transport Company Limited. If confirmed by the management of the Board of Bost, he will replace George Mensah Okri, who resigned from the position last Friday. Mr. Mensah Okri tendered in his re resignation to the president after seven, a little over two years at the state entity. Reasons for his resignation are known. However, reports indicate that it may be linked to the issue of contracts at Bost. Mr. Provencal is currently the technical director to the Energy Minister, John Peter Mehu. A statement signed by Deputy Energy Minister Joseph Kujo on Monday, that is today, requested the board to take a quote due note and assess the suitability of Mr. Provincial for appointment accordingly. End of quote. Away from oil, the level of non performing loans has recorded some significant reduction for the first half of this year. Latest Bank of Ghana report shows that it went down by 20% to 6.9 billion ending June this year. But what were the drivers of this decline and what, to what extent is it impacting uh, banks' financial position? George Raffae has more. 
The report attributes the reduction to recent regulatory directive for commercial banks that were struggling to recover some of these loans to write them off their books. This actually helped reduce the total stock, debts that they fear could go bad, or loans that they cannot recover to reduce from 8.74 billion Ghana cities to almost 7 billion Ghana cities at the end of June this year. According to the Bank of Ghana, private sector accounted for about 97% these loans while the public sector took up the rest even though one might be excited about this decline it wasn't as a result of businesses and individuals paying back these loans but rather a decision to write them off now if some of these banks are strong this would not be a big deal however the concern here is that banks that are not doing well could still find a way to factor it into fresh loans going forward a development that could increase the cost of credit in the country Total loans and advances went down by 8.4% in what the Bank of Ghana attributes to development in the banking sector as a result of the recent cleanup. Deposits, on the other hand, increased by 22.3% to 75.5 billion Ghana cities at the end of June this year, outperforming the previous period, that is June 2018. Now, this could impact positively on credit extension going forward, looking at the fact that deposits are picking up and these banks might again on lend to private businesses in the country. Government has failed to secure the entire amount targeted in its historic 20-year bond sale. It wanted to secure about 450 million cities based on the issuance calendar from June to August. Sources, however, indicate that government got 162 million CDs from investors. Let's hear from investment analyst Michael Kobler. He has been explaining government's inability to secure the targeted amount. He spoke to my colleague, Philip Namfuri. The first thing I'll talk about is timing. Um, timing of the bond. Um, it depends on what other competing bonds are available at the time that government did the placement. Um, investors have choices. So investors will typically look at a country uh, as a portfolio and decide that they would tilt towards this country or that country. Now, if you place a bond and at the same time the other competing bonds in the market, investors make a choice as to where they want to put their money. The second point is that um, investors like security and they don't, investors, we, we always say that money is fungible uh, and money does not like noise. Um, you would agree with me that in recent times there has been too much turbulence in our marketplace, um, the cleanup of the banking sector, um, issues about corruption, issues about uh, perceived corruption, issues about um, all kinds of deals that have been people that are not happy about. Um, and this sends very wrong signals to the market. Um, so if you place a 20-year debt, and what you are basically telling investors is that they should take a 20-year uh, horizon on the country. They must, they must take a, a risk on the country for 20 years. Um, they have to assess it and make sure that are they comfortable based on all the happenings in the country. Um, is, it, is it safe to put their money here for 20 years? And that is why sometimes when we are making utterances in the country as politicians, we have to be very guarded with what we say because the world has become so small. It's a small global village such that if you continue putting negative feedback about your country, um, it affects the, 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 the outturn of, of such uh, uh, placements. Um, also, we also have to also admit that we have, we have in, the, in recent times, we have raised a couple of bonds, um, and there has also been reports from the IMF and other agencies about our borrowing rates and all that. All those things send some signals to investors um, about our debt sustainability. Uh, it raises concerns for investors, and it will be the reason why people will not necessarily patronize their bond, I mean, as it were. All right, so let's have a feel of what is happening on the stock market. We have on the line Nick Adam Poku uh, to help us with some analysis. Uh, good afternoon to you. It's rather better to be uh, Gold Coast Fund Management. Thanks for your time tonight. Uh, Betha, so what's been happening the whole of today? How are we starting the week? Okay, um, so today the Ghana Stock Exchange began on a very positive note. Uh, though we had two losers and one gainer on the exchange, EBC went up by 9.51% as the only gainer on the exchange to close up four Ghana cities, 95 pesos and 
The state general went down by 1.39%. Unilever dropped by 1.18%. To close at 16, Ghana is 80 pesos per share. And so the state general is 71 pesos per share. But the good thing is MTN traded quite a significant number of shares on the market. Over 4 million shares were traded in MTN today on the Ghana Stock Exchange. And uh, that actually gave us that huge volume that we saw. And the total value of shares that traded today closed at 3,260,211.33 Ghana today. Nine equities participated in trading, which resulted in the one gainer, that's GBT, and two losers on the market. And to the major, okay. Yeah, I was just going to ask you about uh, how the, the week has started. Uh, because we spoke on Friday and we talked about the fact that uh, the stocks were not performing so well. In fact, we were told that it dropped its lowest point in almost two years last Friday. And mm -hmm. so I'm just saying, uh, how are we beginning the week uh, just looking at the performance so far? Is it that of a recovery? Well, by close of today's trading session, that's um, the first day of the week, the benchmark composite index went up. It went up marginally by 0.41%. That's 9.32 points uh, to close at 2,279.11 points. And that's actually representing a, it's still representing a weak loss of 0.5% and a four-week loss of 1.4% because this margin is not very significant. And the year-to-date loss is still above negative 10, which is 11, negative 11.4%. The financial stock index also increased by 1.01%. That was quite high. It was a 1,998.65 points. And that is also recording a week-to-date loss of 0.72% and a four-week loss of 1.87%. See, what happened is we, we didn't see... Um, a very significant jump in the composite index which measures the average performance of the market. Mm. But we rather saw a lot of shares trading on the exchange, and that's happened in MTN. It's been very liquid lately on the exchange. Though we didn't see any price change, um, it traded quite a significant like number of shares. So you saw advice yeah. that uh, I invest in oil and gas? Yes. Um, Girl currently on the stock exchange is one of the equities that we recommend. The current price is two Ghana cities. Total is uh, three Ghana cities, and it's a recommended share that you can buy now on the exchange. You can also consider GGBL, Unilever, and then um, uh, Republic Bank. Mm. And for now, you can consider selling some shares in FML on the exchange. Right, let's, let's take a quick look at the currency market and what's uh, happening today. What can you report? Well, today the local currency actually appreciated by the U.S. dollar. It went up by 0.89% at the close of 5.40 Ghana cities per dollar. And the euro also saw the city going up, appreciating by 0.56% to close of 6 Ghana cities for 1 euro. That's quite impressive. And if you look at how the city has been performing right from uh, May and till now, it's been a little bit volatile, but on a stable note, let me put it that way. We've seen some ups and downs. For instance, yesterday it was down, but today it's gone up. So mm. the value of the city has appreciated as compared to yesterday by the margins that I've already talked about. It's not a straight line um, performance. All right. There's been some little ups and downs with regards to the city's performance against these two major currencies. All right, Bertha Tibiga, thank you so much. We'll come back to you thank at you the end much. of the week uh, to find out how things play out. Well, in other news yeah. tonight, Chief Executive of uh, Ghana Cocoa Board, Joseph Wayne Edu, has revealed prices of cocoa will be increased significantly by 2020-2021 crop year. Now, though the Producer Price Review Committee has the mandate to fix farm gate price, he is optimistic it would settle on a very good price to make farmers happy. Mr. Edu says the anticipated increase will place a premium on farmer income and welfare. Join us as Mahmoud Mohamed Nuruddin reports. Cocoa pricing has over the years become topical in Ghana, Ivory Coast and the rest of the world. The two West African nations have had to suspend sale of cocoa beans to force the international market to respond to their demands.
Mr. Adu reveals that to all discussion, farmers should expect favorable price announcements on October 1, 2019, before a further increase for the 2020-2021 buying year. October, you will hear good news. October 1st October 2019. Name 1st October 2020. Next year, on the 1st of October, that is 2020, you would hear unprecedented news about cocoa prices. Cocoa Bua, the DC, Memuda, and Eva. It's in your bass. So we came here to inform you to start working on your cocoa farms. I am pleading with those who have farmlands to take good care of them and desist from giving them out to illegal miners. Mr. Edu addressed separate rallies of cocoa farmers and chiefs at Ninehini Mancraso and Tipa on a three-day tour of Ashanti region. It was to assess the level of farmer participation in various cocoa productivity enhancement programs, PEPs, being implemented by Cocoa Board. It also afforded the CEO the opportunity to gather first-hand information on farmer challenges in various producing areas. Mr. Edu encouraged cocoa farmers to pay extra attention to cultural practices to be able to produce more beans in order to benefit from any price adjustment. The chief executive reveals government will soon distribute 100,000 motorized slashes to farmers. October ending. In case you are running away from one, you are currently near 100,000. We have authorized the importation of 100,000 motorized slashes into the country between October and November. The slashes have detachable handles and can be changed. I am particularly happy in the sense that all the slashes will be handed over to the leadership of the cooperatives. Mohamed Nuruddin's report read to you. Well, uh, let's turn to the aviation sector. Some development there want to update you on. The Ghana Civil Aviation Authority is once again cautioning the public against transacting business by purchasing airline tickets from the Global Ghana Airlines, stating they have no license to operate. Global Ghana Airlines um, has for the second time published the sale of tickets to passengers offering flights from Accra to Chicago. In a statement to Joy Business, Director General of the Authority, Simon Alote, strongly emphasized that the regulator has not granted license to any such airline. Director for Economic Regulation and Business Development of the Civil Aviation Authority, Reverend Stephen Wilfred Arthur, has been speaking to Joy Business. We would still stand by our earlier caution that they ought not to conduct any um, business with global Ghana Airlines. So far as they are um, alleged fly service um, by way of air charter service between Chicago and the, um, the city of Accra is concerned because we do not know of any, neither has the um, authorities from the U.S. informed the Ghanaian counterparts, that is the Ghana Civil Authority, that such an airline seeks to conduct whether charter or scheduled operations. And our um, team of inspectors will also be required to undertake um, certain safety inspections and miss other checks. So there is a long way, if ever, they intend doing business the right way. But for now, we consider their internal operations as um, unlawful and it is in bad taste. The first time it appeared as if they were operating from our end 
and thereby claiming to be a Ghanaian entity um, duly um, licensed to do such flight operations. But this time around, they are claiming rather to be US registered and commencing their charter operations from Chicago to Accra. So we intend also collaborating with the Federal Aviation Administration under the Department of, um, of Transportation. Okay, you're watching Business Live. Now, the protracted social media battle on which country Ghana or Nigeria makes the best jollof ended at the maiden edition of the Onga Ghana Jollof Battle. Now, 24-year-old chef Sika Moto faced her Nigerian contender, Abbas Adebukola, known as Chef Ture. In a two-hour cooking competition, we have the results in this report. The protracted social media battle on which country, whether Ghana or Nigeria, makes the best pot of jollof ended at the maiden edition of the Onga Ghana Jollof Battle, thanks to a baden 24-year-old chef, Sika Motu, who faced up a Nigerian contender, Abbas Adebukola, known as Chef Ture. With scores of Nigerian and Ghanaian social media enthusiasts cheering on their favorites as they put the best Onga ingredients together for a tasty plate of jollof, both Sika from Ghana and Chef Ture from Nigeria pulled off their best cooking skills. After an hour and a half of slicing, frying and steaming, both contenders presented their plates of a scoop of jollof to a three-member panel of judges for tasting. After taking turns on both plates, carefully munching to savor the taste of both meals, all judges unanimously settled on the Ghana jollof carefully prepared by Sika. This translated to a 95% score for Ghana's Sika and 75% for Nigeria's Chef Ture. Well, she brought varieties of flavor onto a plate. Explain the reasons why Ghana's Sika won the competition. Program director of the Chefs Association of Ghana, Chef Jove Ansa said her meal was very creative and attractive. She didn't just concentrate on her jollof, but she complemented it with uh, a couple of flavors. And then uh, she blew us with a couple of new trends of techniques. Well, for Chef Ture, it appears the judges were not impressed with her decision to use broken rice for her dish. As she explained, that is how it is usually prepared back home in Nigeria. At least I'm not going home empty-handed. And this is actually another thing to add into my CV. At the end of the announcement, Sika was awarded a cash prize worth 2,000 US dollars, as well as some kitchen equipment from Pomacito Ghana Limited. And Chef Ture, on the other hand, also won $1,000 and kitchen equipment. I mean, it wasn't easy. I was like nervous all the time. I was like, like the whole of Ghana is like on my shoulders. You know, it was very scary and exciting at the same time. Meanwhile, brand manager of Onga Ghana, Madame Linda Nante, tells Joy Business the event was aimed at commemorating World Jollof Day, which is celebrated by African youth on August 22. As part of the event marking the International World Jollof Day, which occurred on the 22nd of August, we thought that we had to come up with a program or an event that will merge the two countries together. Jollof is a dish that is hugely popular in African countries as Senegal, Ghana, Nigeria, Gambia, Sierra Leone, Liberia and Cameroon. The reddish one-pot dish is prepared with rice and tomato sauce with alternative ingredients that slightly vary by country. This variation in recipes has been the cause for debate, particularly on social media, but also street conversations about which country makes the best jollof. But as it stands now, Ghana maintains the bragging right against Nigeria on which country prepares the best of jollof. Best Jollof comes from Ghana, no doubt. And this morning is on our website, myjoinline.com forward slash business. My name is Daryl Kwao. Thanks for watching tonight. We'll see you same time tomorrow.